This UCSD TV program is a presentation of University of California Television for educational and non commercial use only. This is a podcast of Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego. To learn more about how you can support Scripps, visit us online at scripps.ucsd.edu. A thousand miles from land, the Pacific Ocean is striking in its beauty. Rich, deep blue waters, calm seas, and serene stillness. The North Pacific Ocean Gyre is a lonely destination. Far from major shipping lanes and fishing fleets, the region has been referred to as an ocean desert. Last summer, the gyre was in the spotlight, not for its quiet beauty, but because it's become a gathering place for trash. The so-called Great Pacific Garbage Patch exists in a region known as an oceanic convergence zone. Here, plastic and other human-produced debris is accumulating in a giant vortex. Apart from expeditions headed by the Al Galita Marine Research Foundation, the garbage patch has been understudied by scientists, leading to questions about the plastic and debris's impact on the ecosystems and animal life in the gyre. In August 2009, a group of Scripps Oceanography graduate students traveled to the gyre aboard the research vessel New Horizon to assess the magnitude of the problem. My name is Miriam Goldstein. I'm a graduate student at Scripps Institution of Oceanography and I am chief scientist for the Seaplex Cruise. Uh, the Seaplex Cruise is the Scripps Environmental Accumulation of Plastics Expedition. So we're out here going to the North Pacific Gyre to find out where the plastic is and what it's doing that's supposed to be accumulating out here. The, the gyre, as you know, is a, um, a large circulating feature. It's a natural feature of the Pacific Ocean. It's a, um, a feature of both the North and South Pacific have their own gyres, and the Atlantic, North and, and South Atlantic also have, have gyres. And gyres are um, circulating features where the water is, um, is essentially swept around, um, and portions of that are circulating and retaining material, retaining water, potentially retaining buoyant material. My main role on this cruise is to uh, run the bongo sample, sample uh, bongo net and do the plankton sampling for that. And so I collect plankton and uh, we're preserving it for further analysis ashore. We need a lot of different types of data because there are so many different kinds of organisms out there and there uh, they can't all be sampled or collected in the same manner. In counting debris, we've also been looking at what particular types of things are out there. And I'll tell you, I've seen, I know I've seen three toothbrushes, a flosser, probably, I don't know, we've seen hundred or hundreds of fishing floats, buoys, fishing nets, detergent bottles, water bottles, all kinds of things that people throw off uh, as garbage from shore or from their boats. The thing we've seen the very most of are these very small pieces of debris, sort of confetti-like stuff. Well, it's just interesting just to see it. You know, you, you can read about a plastic patch in the ocean, but it's not quite the same thing as seeing it. Um, we have not found the island of lost toys. But if you look over the side every minute or so, a plastic jug or fragment of a bucket or a piece of net or a fishing float goes by, and it really is once a minute. But you can't get out and walk on it. If you multiply you know, one piece of plastic per 10 square meters of ocean surface by this area of the ocean, you get quite a bit of trash. My role in this cruise, beyond just helping out where I can, is to look to see if small pelagic fishes are eating pieces of plastic. And, and this is important because the plastic picks up marine pollutants from the water, and it's possible that these pollutants enter the food chain with these little fish. So if we dissect some of these fish and find little bits of plastic, we know that it's possible that they are accumulating things like dioxin or DDT um, or other noxious chemicals and they can accumulate as you go up the food chain. Uh, these little fish get eaten by bigger fish and a bigger fish eats lots of little fish and it will accumulate pollutants from those little fish until we see it on the grocery store shelf. There are a couple things that have been really surprising to me. One is the amount of really, really small pieces of plastic, which is really interesting for bacterial aspects of plastic interaction because bacteria are one of the few things that can colonize these really, really small particles and that might have important implications for the rest of the food chain if it makes plastic tasty to something else or appealing uh, settlement surface for small invertebrates and then grow larger and cause the plastic to sink, things like that. 
We got to a point yesterday where we started counting per minute and we got over 200 and to a point where it was so much that we literally dropped our pencils and just stared at it with mouths open and could not physically make an estimate of how much we were passing. So I would say there's a lot of plastic debris in the middle of this ocean. Well, I think the problem is actually a lot worse than we had ever imagined. Just seeing the density of flex in a random location in the middle of the ocean, a thousand miles away from anything, I've never seen that much trash anywhere outside of like an inner city harbor. Um, so it's very disturbing that it's that there's a, that much out here and that it's all plastic. What it surprises me the most is the way it makes me feel. Um, it's more depressing. I was really excited to come out here and get to experience this and be one of the first to come out here and see this offhand. And it kind of makes you sad, almost wishing you didn't see um, what is actually out here in the ocean. A little depressing, but also um, very scientifically interesting that we're sampling it in a really quantitative manner so we can sort of figure out what exactly is going on and what effect all this plastic pollution has done, if anything. In my opinion, the most important aspect of the Seaplex cruise is to come out here and begin to get a sense of the scope of the problem of marine plastics. We didn't know it beforehand. Now what we know is that we haven't yet seen the highest levels of debris. We don't know how much there is, but we know that there's a heck of a lot. So we could see all these amazing, cool creatures going about their business just below this thin layer of plastic. And I found that juxtaposition really sad. Because here's this very unstudied ecosystem where nobody hardly ever comes. And then there's all this stuff floating on the top that's sort of a sign of industrial society. And I, that was the first time, I think, on this trip that I started to feel really sad. We have a whole list of new questions that have come out of this cruise. Um, and they range just from basic science questions like the small scale circulation of water out here to applied questions like how do we sample the plastic that we know is in the deeper water but couldn't get to on this cruise. So we just, this cruise has given rise to a whole raft of new questions. So we certainly hope we'll be fortunate enough to take this data and at some point uh, follow it up on another cruise. This has been a presentation of Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego.